Hello, my name is Roy Jackson. I serve as the Cultural Resources Coordinator for the Florida Department of Transportation for over 25 years. You're about to see a video that features the importance of the CSX Bridge over the New River in Fort Lauderdale. I hope you enjoy it. This was done as partial fulfillment of a memorandum of agreement signed by the United States Coast Guard, the Florida Department of Transportation, and the State Historic Preservation Officer. Um, it features both this historic bridge and the importance of historic bridges in general. Thank you. I'm District Secretary James Wolf in Fort Lauderdale, and I'm very pleased to be here. We're representing a project to, to replace a historic CSX railroad bridge. And we're very sensitive to the circumstances of that and the historic nature. And uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how we approach projects and structures, particularly replacements, that involve historical bridges. The CSX Railroad Bridge in Fort Lauderdale over the New River is, was built in 1927 and it's a Scherzer rolling block bridge. We don't have that many rolling leaf bridges that still operate. It's certainly a significant structure that uh, our first call would be to repair it. So why are we taking it out and replacing it? We have bridges that become functionally obsolete and they become structurally deficient. And this one is both. And the most critical problem that cannot be repaired is the channel. And we're, we're working with the Coast Guard on this. It has a skew in it. It has an inadequate channel width. And these can only be resolved with complete reconstruction of the bridge. So we're faced with taking out a historical significant structure. What can we do with that? One thing we can do is that the replacement bridge is going to be sensitive to that and it will be a similar type of bridge. It's a bascule bridge replacement in kind. It's also going to be a rolling leaf bridge, which we don't always do, but we're going to replace it in kind here. What else can we do? We can be sensitive to the old bridge by taking the uh, old leaf and relocating it into an, uh, an adjacent park area where it will be a broad walk for pedestrians over a marshy area. And that's great. People will be able to see the old leaf uh, for generations, for decades. It'll be there and the new structure will be sensitive to the old design. The Historic Bridge Program is the first major task I was given when I started working with the Department of Transportation because we were in the middle of our first statewide bridge survey. And out of it we, developed, we did a survey report. And that survey report uh, provided the basis for the bridge book, the Historic Highway Bridges of Florida. One of the greatest values of turning the survey into a book was that the books were always kept on a shelf. So when you had to talk to somebody about a historic bridge, they would go to the book, not to the survey. The survey has a lot more information on it, on a whole lot more bridges, but the book is what they go to, and the book is what features the more prominent historic structures. Uh, I'm Jim Phillips and uh, I'm an engineer that primarily works on, on bridges. I'm always impressed, typically in my experience, bridges that were built prior to World War II demonstrate a very high degree of craftsmanship. Now some of that is probably due to the uh, mechanisms through which the bridges were built. Uh, examples being that, uh, for example, Platt Street in Tampa, that's a project where a contract was awarded to the Strauss Bridge Company and they did the design and then they worked with a, uh, a contractor uh, to do the construction. So I think that the craftsmanship that we see on those, um, and it shows up in things as simple as, you know, riveted connections and uh, lacing members that are used uh, on some of these older structures all riveted together. Also into things like uh, Platt Street um, has these, these beautiful uh, cornices on the control house um, that uh, if, if you go up and look at them closely you say wow you know somebody really put a lot of effort into that. Um, so we see examples of that everywhere um, 
The original Bridge of Lions had a, a very nice um, pedestrian railing along the back of sidewalk. Um, they, they became a good example of some, some very fine craftsmanship. Um, we have to look at these bridges holistically and determine whether it's viable to preserve the bridge or whether there are more drastic measures needed to meet transportation needs. Um, we typically go through a whole listing of evaluating all of the deficiencies on the bridge, whether those are physical deficiencies, geometric, um, barrier strength, capacity. Um, go through and look at those and then identify what needs to be done to do a preservation project, which would include uh, bringing it up to capacity, meeting standards, or wherever you don't meet a standard, you would have a design exception or a design variation uh, recorded for that. So at the end of the day, the preserved bridge meets current standards or you've documented and have approval for all the items on it that, that don't. The bridges that are probably the most certain of preservation uh, are going to be the bridges that are important to their local communities. The Main Street Bridge in Jacksonville would be a very difficult bridge for us to, 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 to demolish or remove because the city of Jacksonville and the people who live in Jacksonville uh, see that as a, a, a prominent feature in their city skyline. Uh, it's on a million postcards. It's a really, really nice vertical lift bridge. Um, so the locals would by and large prevent any easy removal of that bridge. Uh, same thing as the Bridge of Lions in St. Augustine. That bridge wasn't going to go anywhere. Uh, that bridge was, and they had, they had raised local funds to build that bridge uh, back in the 20s and, and, and they're attached to that bridge. They love that bridge and they've made that bridge an integral part of that whole historical setting in St. Augustine. The historic bridges can almost encapsulate what they say in the National Register about uh, a feeling of time and place. In developing a major bridge rehabilitation or replacement project, you need to recognize that it's all about teamwork. And a lot of times we'll bring in architects, or we'll bring in landscape architects, and we'll get ideas. You, you may bring in a consultant that, that does a charrette and goes out and solicits public input. And then we bring in designers that maybe are able to decide what form of, of, of structural approach are we going to take or is there a creative solution that will allow us to save the old structure. In, in a lot of regards you need to be talking to the team members and agreeing on what it is that we're working together towards. We're, we're, we have different skills that we can bring to the table and hopefully we're going to find the best solution for that structure and for the public.